What is up my ninjas? Dart Frog Ninja here. It's Friday, so we all know what that means. It's time for another episode of The Dart Discussion, brought to you by... Yeah, nobody. Today, guys, we're gonna talk about quarantine tanks. Unfortunately, my frogs did not arrive. I won't be getting them till Tuesday. There was a little bit of a snafu with uh, the shipper, um, but He's been in contact with me, assuring me everything's going to be okay. I trust him. He's a really great guy. Um, I'll talk more about him and his companies that he that he operates uh, when I get the box, because there will be an unboxing video on Tuesday, and then I'll see if I can get releasing them into the quarantine tank. But anyways, back on subject. Today, we're going to talk about quarantine tanks. What is a quarantine tank? Why would you ever need one? When would you need one? And basically, how to set up quarantine tank there's different ver versions of it depending on why you need the quarantine tank um, so we'll go into that but uh, and I'll go into what version mine is so without further ado let's get hopping All right, my ninjas, so this here is a quarantine tank. Now, what is a quarantine tank, you might ask? Well, a quarantine tank is a separate tank that you would set up for uh, various reasons. One, it could be for a sick animal, whether you're receiving a new animal or one of your frogs is appears ill. You would separate them, isolate them, depending on what it might be. The setup might be different. Um, so you would do that for sick animals. Uh, if you're receiving new animals that are sick or possibly sick, let's say wild caught, um, and you aren't sure if they're treated, again, you would put them in a quarantine isolation tank and then you would seek further uh, treatment options, whether it's contacting a vet, doing fecal samples, or if you're experienced with it, you can treat it with pan cure. Um, and I, I can't remember what the other medicine is, but it depends. You would want to get, I think, a professional opinion on that. So don't just go doing something because you think uh, you think it might be something because it could turn out it might not be and you can end up killing your frogs if you treat it with the wrong medicine. So you've got sick animals of your own or possibly sick or wild caught that could possibly be sick or they're un untreated. Uh, injured animals. Again, you might set up might be different for an injured animal. So if you have an injured, you received injured frogs or you're one of your inhabitants is injured, you would remove them, isolate them, make sure you can see if you can get them better. All right, and next, you would use a quarantine tank for new arrivals. Uh, so if you're getting new frogs like I am and you already have existing frogs and you're gonna add the new frogs into the existing frogs, you're gonna wanna quarantine them. Um, so basically, you're gonna wanna, sorry, Constantine is going off the chain today. Um, you're gonna wanna build a quarantine tank and you're gonna wanna quarantine them, make sure they eat um, and basically, you make sure that they're doing okay as far as they don't have any illnesses, they don't look like they have any kind of parasites, they're not bringing anything into your uh, existing tank that would hurt your frogs. So those are, some of the, those are some of the reasons why you would need a quarantine tank. Next, we're gonna go over different setups of the quarantine tank. Okay, my ninjas, so what you see here, this is a quarantine tank. This is for new arrivals. Now, you're gonna wanna do something basic like I have. I just have um, a basic dart frog set up. I didn't even have to go this advanced, but I do have a, dra a small drainage layer, a substrate divider, a little bit of ABG mix, some sphagnum moss. I got some leaf litter. I have oak, uh, magnolia. I put a pothos clipping from a pothos plant that I've been growing in my house for years that's got no chemicals, nothing in it. Just took a clipping, planted it. It looks like it'll be, it doesn't look the greatest right now, but it will perk up. It'll be fine because pothos survive. And then I put in a little cocoa hut for them to go into to hide if they want to stay out of the, uh, the light. But this is a perfect example for a 
new arrivals. You can also set it up more simplistic. You could just do a layer of sphagnum moss with some leaf litter and a place to hide, maybe a plant clipping if you want to, you don't have to. You could also do, if you're not sure if they're treated or if they're wild caught and you got new arrivals coming in, you could also just do paper towel. That way you could see fe the, the fecals uh, and you can collect fecal samples easier that way and make sure that your, do your frogs are eating properly and are having bowel movements so that way you can kind of judge and, and see for yourself if anything looks strange or if, you know, if there are pooping or whatever you want to call it, uh, make sure that they're healthy. So uh, you could do it just a set of paper towels. You will have to change them a little bit more frequently. I did it this way because I know where my frogs are coming from. I trust where they're coming from because I have two sources. I know where they are, uh, where they originated from. I'll go into more on that when I unbox them, but this is just a temporary holding area for them. Now, basically with the quarantine tank, you can uh, you want it to be away from your animals. You don't want to cross contaminate. So whatever I touch, this isn't super far away from my bio pot because I don't have room right now, but I will make sure not to, to cross contaminate and touch anything um, that goes in this tank and bring it to my bio pod. So uh, be careful with that. You don't want to cross contaminate. If you have the space, you can create your own room for a quarantine room or a side of the room where it's just quarantine animals. So it's away from everything, but this is the best I could do. And again, these frogs, I'm not worried about them being sick, um, but we'll see. You can, you just gotta be sure. Now, another reason for the quarantine tanks, you might want to wonder how long are you supposed to quarantine the frogs? Now, typically a month, is what you want to do um, for new arrivals, uh, whether it be well caught um, or whatnot for frogs that you're going to add to an existing setup with other frogs. Um, so I'm going to do 30 days and I will document it each week. You'll see videos with the new frogs and we'll see how they're doing. Um, and I'll give you updates, but 30 days, but you can do longer than that. You can do two months. You can do 60 days. You can do 90 days. You can do half a year if you're really worried about it. Um, but it really depends if the frog, if a frog's sick, It'll probably be longer, maybe. Um, and I definitely recommend seeking uh, veterinaries, uh, veterinarians' uh, advice if your frog is sick. Don't just try administering stuff with, if you're not sure about it because that's a good way to kill um, your frogs. But uh, 30 days is what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to monitor them. I'm going to feed them on the normal schedule like I feed my two frogs now. I'm really excited to get them in. It's very hard to find two uh, well, one, at least one adult Terribilis. So I found two females to throw in there with him. So you give him a little harem. He's been calling every day. It is the rainy season uh, down where they live in Colombia. April is the rainy season. So I think he's been, he's been calling every day, multiple times a day for five minutes, 10 minute periods. He is a little camera shy, but you heard him for in the first segments, he was calling nonstop so there you go. But this is a, your basic quarantine setup for new arrivals. Again, you can do simplistic stuff depending on, you know, if you're going to collect fecals, if they're sick and you just want to monitor them or, uh, or whatever. But this is a good cheap little setup right here just for, um, just for monitoring them. Like I said, I will give you video updates weekly. So that's basically what it is. And I actually went over it when you need them as well. So that's quarantine tanks in a nutshell, guys. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will definitely answer them and we'll go from there. But that's a pretty much a simplistic. There's not a whole lot to talk about with quarantine tanks, but this is what a quarantine tank is. So we went over all that. But uh, there you go, guys. I'm gonna finish off with showing you these two. They're active today. It is feeding day, so they've been pasting the glass and coming up to the glass. Um, so both of them want to eat. Today, um, maybe it's probably Cricket Friday if they have the uh, proper size crickets. And then, uh, I'm on the rotating schedule. So today is vitamin A dusting. So and it'll be the only time this month that they'll get a purely vitamin A. So there you go. And then I believe It'll be a, another monthly update for the Biopod next week as well, so you'll have that video to look forward to. Again, guys, that's Quarantine Tanks in a nutshell. Right there. Have any questions, let me know. So please like, subscribe, comment to all my videos. Dart discussions always happen on Fridays. Um, if you want to see a particular subject covered, 
ask me or you know ask me about it and I'll see if I can do a dart discussion or any kind of separate video about it um, and we'll go from there so there you go guys this is dart frog ninja saying frog on